teachers and parents, and welcome to Math Unlocked, where I get to offer you strategies for teaching math for grades three, four, and five. My name is Miss McCarthy, and I'm the creator of McCarthyMathAcademy.com. And I'm on a mission to make math fun, make it click, and make it stick for you. That way you can get out there and support the students that you work with. In today's episode, we're going to break down a fourth grade skill, which involves comparing number. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get to it. And let me teach ya. All right, y'all. So comparing numbers here, we have three numbers. And right away, I want you to look at how this is presented for a fourth grader. This would be a little bit confusing because you can see we've got a bunch of digits. We have commas and semicolons and commas and semicolons and commas. It can look a little disorganized. It can look a little jumbled for the brain, right? But we need to have our students get used to the fact that these numbers are being separated by a semicolon. So maybe you wanna like box the numbers, have them practice boxing the actual numbers that are being separated by a semicolon. And also sometimes they're separated by commas, which can get even more confusing. So just make sure that you're giving your students time to practice finding the number in the set that we have here. So we have a set of three numbers here. We have 41,068. We have 41,608 and we have 4,168. Now, in most cases, when we have these numbers right here, we're actually going to compare them by putting them in order. And the order that we're going to focus on today is going is ascending order, like a plane taking off from the lowest point up into the air would be going from the lowest to the greatest, the least to the greatest. So that's what we're going to focus on today. And obviously, if we were going the other way, descending order, that would be going from the greatest to the least. Something that students tend to do is, watch this, I'm going to make a mistake, but something that they tend to do, sometimes when they don't have a strong understanding of place value, is they start to compare the very first digits. And you notice here we have four, four, and four. So those are the same. Sometimes we teach them to move on. Then we have one, one, and one. Those are the same. Next, we have zero, six, and six. So a student might now think that we're between these two for the greatest number. And that's not the case here because this one right here is 4,168. And we know that based on place value, that would be the smallest number. But sometimes students aren't seeking out the place value, they go right to comparing the digits. And that's really important that they understand the place value, which is what we're gonna focus on first. And here, here you can see that I've got a space to do some place value work and a space to record a number line. Let's start with place value. So we can see here that we're going to the one, ten, hundreds, one thousands, ten thousands place. The highest here is the ten thousands and the highest here is the thousands. So we need to make a place value chart that goes to the 10 thousands place. So I'm gonna shorten it and speed it up by just going ones, tens, hundreds. Okay, this is where we're separating the period. Then we have the one thousands and the 10 thousands. By writing in shorthand like this, it helps you to work out the problem a little bit more quickly instead of recording the exact names of each place. So that's what I would recommend doing. Okay, we're recording these three numbers here. So the first number, we've got a four and the ten thousands. So then we're just gonna put all the other digits in just like so. Then we have four in the ten thousands place. We've got a one, six, zero, and eight. And then finally we have a four in the one thousands place. And then a one, six, and an eight. So right away, we can find our least number, our lowest number, which is right here, 4,168. So I can write that up here. 4,168 is less than, let's find the next smallest number. So here we have four and four in the 10 thousands place. Those are the same value. One and one in the 1 thousands place. Those have the same value. And then we have zero and six in the hundred thousands place. So the next smallest number would be this one right here with the value of zero hundreds. So we can say that 4,168 is less than 41,068, 
which is less than our final number of 41,608. So this would be how you write it from least to greatest. Greatest to least, you would just flip them around and put 41,608 first. We also have to know how to compare them using a number line, which is also very helpful to visually see where these numbers are located. So if we do that, let's do this. We'll say that zero is right here and we're going to go all the way to 40,000, right? So I'm just gonna count by. Here's 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, actually past 40,000, 40,000, and 50,000, running out of room. So now 4,168 is obviously going to be way before 10,000. Halfway would be 5,000, so it's going to be just a little bit before that. We can label that as 4,168, all the way over there. Next up, we have 41,068. So if we're zooming in, this would be 45,000. It's gonna be really close over here. Right, and then really 40, so that would be 41,068. And honestly, 41,608 is going to be just after that. I'm probably even not getting them close enough because they're so, according to my number line, so far apart. But here we can see a visual representation of the order of these three numbers. All right, so this was comparing numbers. I hope that this episode made sense and was helpful. If you're looking for even more support with this skill and tons of math skills, stay tuned because I'm about to break down some next steps that you can take. I hope you found this episode to be helpful. If you did, please let me know by hitting the like button. And if you want to see more, consider subscribing to the channel. It's an easy way to support the content that I bring to you for free on YouTube. If you're a teacher or a parent, especially in Florida, you'll definitely want to check out McCarthyMathAcademy.com. Here is where I offer fast math freebies, including a playlist of fast math style problems and video lessons to support your teaching. For those ready to dive deeper, check out Taken on the Best, a monthly membership packed with video lessons, student guides, extra practice, error analysis videos, math tasks, mini assessments, and much more, which are all strategically aligned to Florida's best standards. With three levels, bronze, silver, and gold, you can choose the support that best fits your needs to promote student growth and skill mastery. Would you like to take taking on the best for a test drive? You can sample one standard per grade to find the right plan for you. Do that by simply requesting a free trial. And if you're gearing up for the final fast math assessment of the school year, Definitely check out Taking on the Fast, a 15-day countdown series with video lessons and fast-style math problems. Start with a sneak peek of day one, and when you're ready, you can make a one-time purchase. And if you're thinking about the gold plan for Taking on the Best, good news, Taking on the Fast is included in your membership. While many of my followers are in Florida, I know that there are teachers and parents everywhere looking for support. That's why I created McCarthy Math 155 with 155 video lessons for each grade level, third, fourth, and fifth. You can also sign up for a free trial to McCarthy Math 155 to explore it before signing up for a monthly membership. And finally, if you've enjoyed my math music videos on YouTube, you can also jam out to ad-free versions on my website. You can find all the links below and please feel free to email me with any questions that you have. I can't wait to see you in the next episode. Until then, get out there and make the world a little bit brighter in your own special way. See you next time.